solution. I, uh, I guess I have little faith because I know the weather is just kind of a sticking point today and Brother Brian mentioned in Sunday school and I'll mention it again because I love you. Be careful of little, maybe little wet spots today either in the road or the parking lot or at your house. Uh, a little wet spot that was a wet spot when you left for church this morning may very well be ice uh, when, you, when you leave. The, the, the temperature's still just plummeting and the uh, wind chill is making it even, even worse than that. So just be careful. Use a little caution. And um, I remember one time I, I was trying to help my wife. We were over at the school and I, just the moment I thought, well, I need to make sure was the moment it was too late. And uh, just, just use caution. Just, just be, uh, be real careful. Jude, y'all know which chapter? Okay. okay. If I said Jude chapter number two, surely somebody say, huh? <laughs> Amen. Stand in reverence to the word of God with me this morning. Well, it's been a good day already, ain't it? Amen. I hope, uh, I hope it shows in my life, and I, I know it shows in your life, but what we put on the sign this week was, I was glad when they said unto me, let us go into the house of the Lord. Brother Jimmy and I were back in the kitchen area and Ryan was training us, showing us how to work on the sign. And I said, you know, maybe we can just find a little picture of a church or something like that. You know, I was thinking clip art, you know, I was glad when they said unto me and Ryan started towards the door and he said, I'll just take a picture of the church. In just a moment. I said, come here. I knew I had a picture on my phone, Brother Thurman with that big rainbow there was God's people walking up through the parking lot and the parking lot full out here on the front. And uh, how many's glad when it's time to go to church? I am. I sure am. Brother Larry is here today. Where you at, Brother Larry? I don't see you. Brother Larry, uh, present. <laughs> Amen. When you can't go and your heart still wants to go, it hurts, don't it, Brother? And we ought to go while we can, say amen. We ought to go while we can. The day may come when we can. Let's look here at a verse of scripture. Um, the Bible said, <clears throat> verse 20, but ye beloved, building up yourselves on your most holy faith. I'll probably not get to this text till tonight, praying in the Holy Ghost. Keep yourselves in the love of God, looking for the mercy of our Lord Jesus Christ unto eternal life. And if some have compassion, making a difference. How many would like to know that when this year is over, you had made a difference. God had used you to make a difference in somebody else's life. Wouldn't that be a wonderful thing to know? Now watch what the Bible said in verse number 23. And others, saved with fear, pulling them out of the fire, hating even the garment spotted by the flesh. The Lord gave me a thought, and I don't have a whole lot written down, but I want to look at this book of Jude, and the thought that I'm looking at, the fire, the Bible said here, pulling them out of the fire, hating even the gar garment spotted by the flesh. I want to look at this thought, the fire, pulling them out or pushing them in? Pulling them out. We're pushing them in. You say, preacher, that's kind of a, a crazy idea, a crazy thought, is it? Jesus said, you're either for me or you're against me. That, that, that preaching on uh, fence straddling, it sounds good, but there's one problem with it. You can't find it in the Bible. You're either on one side of the fence or the other. You can't have one foot in the devil's field and one foot in God's field, amen. You're either gathering into the sheepfold, that's what our lives are doing, or you're scattering abroad. And I, th I thought this morning, you can go ahead and be seated. I'll pray in just a moment. 
But I thought this morning, and this may be a, this may be a, 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 a odd illustration, I guess, but on Sunday mornings, and, and I don't say this for any, any glory or any credit, but when Brother Brian goes across through here, you, you'll, you'll notice I get up. I want to be, if he goes down up here, and you've gone down before, ain't you, Brother Brian? I'm talking about you've fallen. You, you, you've fallen. But all I want to do is make sure he don't go all the way down there. How many's with me right there? It'd be bad enough, won't it, Brother Brian? If you fall up here, you could hit your head or something like that. But I don't want that man that I love tumbling and going down. So I want to get between him and that opportunity. And if he knocks me down and he stays up here, I'll say to God, be the glory. How many would take that for one of your children to keep them from getting hurt? Well, in the world that we live, there are people that are standing right here on the edge. How many knows what I'm talking about? Down there's hell. And up here's a bunch of people that God calls the church, the redeemed, the born again. And what God has spoken to my heart about in this chapter, or in this book, it is just one chapter. What is it, 25 verses, I believe? Yes. What God has spoken to my heart about is where are we at? I don't believe there's a one of us physically that would see a man standing on one leg and walk up here behind him and push him off, push him down. How many is with me right there? But I, I believe that every one of us that, that have any compassion whatsoever in our heart, if we saw him start to tip, we would grab him. And we would pull him with everything in us. Try to pull him back to safety. Brother Brian, you forgive me for using you as an illustration, but I just, that came to, I'd already knew what I was preaching, but just sitting there, I didn't know but what that wouldn't maybe speak to somebody's heart. How many believes that God has left us in the world to get between somebody and the flames? to get between somebody and the judgment that's coming upon this world. So the Lord spoke to my heart, and we may be several services in this, in this book, but the fire, pulling them out or pushing them in. Now here's where we're at today. I believe this is where many, many of God's people are at today, and I it, they, they can only be there in their mind. They can't be there in truth. I believe many people, Brother Grizzle, they feel like, well, I'm neither one. I'm kind of just in a neutral gear. I'm not really actively trying to pull anybody out. And I'm really not actively trying to push anybody in. But the thing about it is there's a problem. You can't find neutral in the Bible, we're, we're, our lives, you, you, you can't help it. Brother Preston, when you go to work, when you go home, when you go to the store, your life is influencing somebody else. Whether we want it to or not, our lives are influencing somebody constantly. Our children, our grandchildren are being influenced by our lives. And our, the question we should ask this morning our actions, our lives, and we're going to get into this text, but would they be pulling people out or would they be pushing people in? The first thing I want to look at this morning, and I don't know how far we're going to get, we're just going to get started and see what God does. Let's look at Jude chapter, chapter 1, verse 1, the only chapter, verse 1. Jude, the servant of Jesus Christ and brother of James, to them that are sanctified by God the Father, and preserved in Jesus Christ and called. Mercy unto you and peace and love. Somebody tell me what those next two words are. Be multiplied. So the, the way the Lord spoke to my heart in this chapter, we pull by multiplying and we push by dividing. We pull by multiplying when love and peace 
is multiplied. No wonder Jesus, Bob, said, by this shall all men know you're my disciples when you have love one toward another. In other words, uh, in the early church, I'm going to read to you in a minute how God over and over, he multiplied the word of God. The people were multiplied. And you can just mark this down. If God's in the multiplying business, the devil's in the dividing business. Some of y'all been around church a lot longer than I have. You listen to me, hear me well right here. When the devil gets his foot in a church and he begins to divide, somebody's going to get pushed. Are you hearing me this morning? You say, well, preacher, how in the world can we as a people, as a church, as our, our family, and then the family of God, how can we be involved? Then multiply. Don't, don't let the devil divide. Multiply. What did he say here? He said, mercy unto you and peace and love. You know what I believe one of the, it should be one of the easiest things, and it's not always the case. Brother Paul, one of the easiest things in the world for me to show you should be mercy. You say, preacher, why should that be one of the easiest things in the world for you to show this man? Because God showed mercy to me. And it's not always the case because we are in this flesh and we are in this body. But, but, but God is saying this morning, I want that mercy to be multiplied. I want that love to be multiplied. I want that peace to be multiplied. And when those things are being multiplied in our lives, we're in the pulling business. Amen. Somebody comes in our presence uh, and the presence of the Lord shows up. And by the way, he ain't showing up when we're divided. But when we're multiplying... That's why in the early church, buddy, they got together. They didn't say, I got this and you got that. They said, got anything you need, you can have it. Say amen. And the love of God was shed abroad in their hearts. Listen to what, some of what the, the word of God said in Acts chapter six and verse seven said the word of God increased and the number of disciples multiplied in Jerusalem greatly. And a great company of the priests were obedient to the faith. Acts chapter 9, verse 31. Then had the churches rest throughout all Judea and Galilee and Samaria and were edified. That word edified, if you look it up, it's talking about a building up, not a tearing down. But he said, and walking in the fear of the Lord and in the comfort of the Holy Ghost, they were multiplied. In Acts chapter 12, verse 24, but the word of God grew and multiplied. In 1 Peter chapter 1 and verse 12, elect according to the foreknowledge of God the Father through the sanctification of the Spirit unto obedience and the sprinkling of the blood of Jesus Christ. Grace unto you and peace be multiplied. 2 Peter 1, 2, grace and peace be multiplied unto you through the knowledge of God and Jesus our Lord. I just say this morning, when God's love is being multiplied. God's peace is being multiplied. Some of you may already be thinking, why is that pastor preaching this way? I don't know of one thing going on in our congregation. Are you listening to me? I don't know of one thing where somebody's trying to divide or so, I know of nothing. But I'm preaching the Bible. I'm just telling you, beloved, when you have something that's good, you know what a lot of people have to do to know they have something that's good? They have to lose it before they know it's good. And we've got love being multiplied. We've got peace being multiplied. We've got mercy being multiplied. And God is saying, don't take that for granted, amen, because when that's being multiplied, people are being pulled. Amen. Would you let the devil get his foot in the door and begin to divide and people will be being pushed. You know who's going to suffer? Listen to me carefully. This is not a, it's not a, a pleasant subject. You know who suffers when a, a church blows wide open? The weak. Maybe somebody that's sitting in the congregation don't even know Jesus. And they get to thinking things like this. Well, if that's what going to church is all about and that's what serving God's all about, I might as well just go to the house or I might as well just go back to the bar. They was friendlier down there at the bar than they were, are down there at the church. It hadn't ought to be that way. And it's not that way in our church. 
I think sometimes God preaches me just to sound a warning, say amen, and, and tell us not to take for granted what we have, amen. When we look forward, glad when they said unto me, let us go into the house of the Lord. When we look forward to hearing the Sunday school lesson, we look forward to prayer meeting, we look forward to hearing the choir. Because I'm gonna tell you something, beloved, if you've ever been in a position, even as a preacher, where you don't look forward to coming to the pulpit, it's a very, very uncomfortable position to be in. I look forward to preaching. You say, why? I, I know I'm where God wants me, doing what God wants me to do. I know people are praying for me. I know God is smiling on our people and on our church. And the word of God is teaching us here, multiply. When we're multiplying, we're pulling. When we're being divided, we're pushing. The Bible said Jude was the servant of Jesus, the brother of James. And I tell you something we ought to say often, we be brethren. If you're born again, beloved, you're my brother. You're my sister in the Lord Jesus Christ. If you're not born again, I want you to be my brother. I want you to be my sister in the Lord Jesus Christ. Now, I'm going to give you this second thing today, and we're probably going to quit right here. This right here, you could preach right here. and I, I, I really believe when God had already spoken to my heart, I didn't realize how he was putting things together. But he wanted Brother Mitchell to speak to, speak to the congregation this morning. Let me show you what I mean. If we pull by multiplying and push by dividing, the second thing I want to give you is this. We pull by contending, but we push by compromising. Watch what the Word of God said in verse number three. Beloved, when I gave all diligence to write unto you of the common salvation, it was needful for me to write unto you and exhort you that you should earnestly contend for the faith which was once delivered unto the saints. For there are certain men crept in unawares, who were before of old ordained to this condemnation, ungodly men, turning the grace of our God into lasciviousness and denying the only Lord God and our Lord Jesus Christ. You say, preacher, I don't know what you mean. Well, let me help you for just a few minutes. I said, we pull by contending. Let me just say this to you. Compromising with this world is not helping the cause of Christ. It might fill up buildings. It might fill up auditoriums. It might bring in millions and millions and millions of revenue. Are you listening to me this morning? But I'm telling you there's not but one thing that's gonna help a sinner. And that's this book being preached like it is to that man or woman like they are. Earnestly contending for the faith that was once delivered to the saints. Brother Mitchell's been at it a long time. You want to know why a lot of people love him? Because he's never changed. What I mean is, that's not that God hasn't helped him and he hasn't grown in the Lord along the, through the years, but his position on the word of God has never changed. His position on the new birth has never changed. His position on the blood atonement has never changed. His position on the virgin birth has never changed. I just want to say this. Thank God for men and women that down through the years have earnestly contended for the faith that was once delivered unto the saints. You say, preacher, what do you think about Washington? I ain't got time to tell you. But I'm going to tell you something right now. If we're not careful, we'll get our thought processes as we were taught in Sunday school more on Washington than we will the house of God. We'll get our thought process more on the, uh, processes more on the stock market than we do the house of God. We'll get our thought processes more on our family than on our faith. Listen to me. The Bible is teaching us here, beloved, that when we're contending for the faith, I, 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 I know this. I thought about this. There's got to be teenagers that at times believe their mom and their dad is plumb off their rocker. 
What do you mean we're going to church three times a week? Have you lost your mind? Aren't you going to get with it at some point, Dad? At some point, Mom? Have you lost your ever-loving mind? Now, here's what happens sometimes. A husband and a wife get to talking to you. Well, maybe we are being a little bit too strict. And they begin to compromise. I want you to hear me well right here. When you're compromising on the principles of that book, you're pushing, you're not pulling. You say, preacher, I don't like that. The truth hadn't been liked for a long time. Say amen. I'm telling you, we're supposed to stand and having done all to stand. And we're supposed to be pulling our children. We're supposed to be pulling in our, at our, our, our workplace. We're not supposed to be pushing. But I'm telling you, beloved, listen. You say, well, preacher, well, aren't you going to get you one of them new Bibles? No, no, no. Because the day I get me a new Bible, it's the day I start pushing and stop pulling. My job is not to push. God saved me and he left me down here on this world, in this earth, on this earth, in this world to pull people out of the fire, having compassion. You say, preacher, you can't save anybody. No, but I tell you what, people will be influenced by my life. The word of God's full of that. We've heard testimonies in our church how the neighbors knew something was wrong because the car wasn't going out of the driveway at such and such a time on a Sunday morning. When you don't even know they're watching, they're watching. And sometimes, beloved, a Ford or a Chevrolet or a, a Pontiac, a vehicle backing out of a driveway for 25 years can say more than a preacher can in his life. <laughs> Because they know where you're going. Well, what happens? My heart's breaking right now. I tell you what happens. Year after year, week after week. You know what that person that's faithful is doing? He's contending. He's saying, this place, Brother Brian, this house of God's important. I need to be there. I need to have my family there. What's old Slewfoot do? He comes along and says, well, now, there's something great going on down Knoxville. Or there's something great going on down Atlanta. Or there's something great going on over here. Or there's something great going on over there. Beloved, listen to me. People don't get out of church all at once. Are you listening to me? But they, they get to that place where they're no longer earnestly contending for the faith that was once delivered to the saints. And they get in that place where they're a little bit complacent. And then they get in that place where they compromise. Are you listening to me? I just want you to know this. When I'm contending, I'm pulling. There, there's not a doubt in my mind. I've only been here like five and a half years. But there's not a doubt in my mind that on these pews have set people that have said, who does he think he is? getting up there and saying Jesus is the only way to heaven. What about all the, let me just say this to you. I'm gonna say this right quickly. Beloved, we better watch out in America. When you start swearing them in on the Koran to the Congress, I'm telling you, we better watch out. You say, preacher, I wouldn't have said that. I will, because I'm earnestly contending for the faith that was once delivered to the saints. You got somebody comes along and says, well, you know, you can just sign this card. You can join this church. We can dip you in our water hole and you'll be all right. They've compromised. I, I, I saw this with my own eyes last night. I didn't watch much, much of it. I just ran across a title. The heresy. Listen to me carefully. This was the title. The heresy of no conviction no conversion. They said that's heresy, Brother Gristle. How many of y'all have been convicted of your sin? How many of you got saved? Say amen. I'm going to tell you this right now. I'm going to say it. 
just in honor of that person that made that, that, uh, that statement. If there's no conviction according to that Bible, are you listening to me? No man can come to me except the Father which has sent me draw him. You say, preacher, what happens when a sinner comes in contact with a father that's drawing him? I'll tell you what happens. Read the book of Isaiah chapter 6. Sinfulness comes into the presence of holiness. And when sinfulness comes into the presence of holiness, sinfulness, beloved, comes, becomes exceeding sinful. Are you listening to me? And we're living in a generation, beloved, where people are saying, well, you know, you know, it, repeat after me. There's all kinds of beloved things being taught that are not taught in the word of God. I don't care to lead a person in prayer if they have told me, beloved, that God is dealing with their heart. They know they're the sinner. They know he's the savior. And beloved, they want to turn from their sin. That doesn't matter, but always let them know it's not the words, it's the heart. It's the condition of the heart as one turns to Christ. But we're living in a generation today where there's more compromising going on than contending for the faith. Well, you know, Jesus, yeah, I, I, I believe in Jesus. What about the virgin birth? Well, I don't know about that. How many's with me right there? See what I mean? Well, if you, if you have a, a Jesus that wasn't virgin born, you have another Jesus. Oh, well, I believe in Jesus, but what about a sinless life? Well, I don't know about that because, I mean, actually, you know, I read this or I watched this. And I'm going to tell you something right now. If you don't have Jesus with a sinless life, you don't have the Jesus of the Bible. If you don't have Jesus that died on that old rugged cross, was buried and rose again the third day according to the scripture, you don't have the Jesus of the Bible. Paul said they're going to come preaching another Jesus. There are religions, big religions, that believe Jesus is a created being. The Jesus of the Bible is a creator. You say, I don't know where you could find that. In the beginning was the Word. The Word was with God. The Word was God. If you have any trouble figuring out who the Word was, drop down to verse number 14. And the Word was made flesh and dwelt among us. and We beheld his glory. The glory is of the only begotten of the Father. Well, you go back to verse number 1. In the beginning was the Word. The Word was with God. And the Word was God. The Bible said all things were made by him. Without him was not anything made. Within him was life, and the life was the light of men. And thank God Almighty, the light shined in darkness, and the darkness comprehended it not. This morning, the Lord has spoken to my heart. Preacher, when you're contending, you're pulling. When you're compromising, you're pushing. You said, now, preacher, I don't like that. Well, it doesn't matter whether we like it or not. There's not a one of us that would push one of our children off these steps, even though the steps are padded and there's carpet at the bottom. There's no way, brother Lance, that you'd put Beckham up here and just leave him to himself on the edge. You'd make sure you stayed on that down there so he could not go over that edge how many believes that God is speaking in this text and if some have compassion making a difference others save with fear pulling them out of the fire I want to ask you a question this morning I may rather be in the pulling business than the pushing business. You know why the devil works so hard to keep us away from our Bible? Because he knows, Brother Thurman, we get in that Bible, the multiplying business starts. God multiplies that love and that peace and that mercy. You know why the devil works so hard to keep us out of the prayer closet? Because he knows in the prayer closet. It's actually, here's how a Christian stands. 
We'll never stand any stronger than when we're on our knees. And God knows if we'll stay humble and we'll walk with him and talk with him, we're not going to want to be, Sister Kathy, in the compromising business. We're going to be in the contending business. We're going to want to pull, pull, and not push towards the fire. How many believes there's a real fire? I talked to a man last week. I am not making light of this at all. He was right here. He was right here. He had a loaded gun and had it right there. And God said, a man. God sent a man. He said, don't do that. He went to the house of God with this man. Nothing happened the first time. Nothing happened the second or third time. But he just kept going. And there was a man. Brother Brian, you spoke about the man in the pulpit this morning. There was a man in the pulpit. And this man that was right there on the edge, right on the edge, already had a pistol right there. He began to ask this question in his heart. Can he be for real? Can that, can that be so? He began, Sister Denise, to go out throughout the community and ask people, is that man real? He was talking about the preacher. Is, is he real? What he's got, is that, is that real? And person after person after person told him, he's the same every day. You meet him on Monday, he won't be any different than he is on Sunday. You say, preacher, I don't know why you're bragging on that preacher. I'll tell you why I'm bragging. Right here was the man. And God, because he didn't compromise, because he lived a life that honored God, because he stayed in this book, he was able to pull that man that was right on the edge. When he got it settled... He said, he went back to church. Y'all have heard stories like this before. He said, I didn't hear too much about what he was saying because the God done settled in his heart. It's real. You can have that. You can be forgiven. And he said, I thought that preacher never would shut up. He said, all I could think was, oh, Lord, let me live to get to that invitation. Let me live to get to the invitation. I'll tell you something. Jesus Christ is more real to me than the ground I stand on this morning. And my job is to be the same on Sunday, the same on Monday, the same on Tuesday, so that I'm in the pulling business. What if that man would have went throughout the community and somebody said, well, he swindled me out of $30. And the next guy said, well, he swindled me out of $300. No doubt that man's pushed. How many's with me? The fire, pulling them out or pushing them in. I don't know about you. I'm going to stand before Jesus one day. I'd hate to stand before Jesus and have it on my record that right here was somebody and because of my stinking flesh, Instead of reaching out and pulling them, I pushed them into the fire. He said, preacher, our lives don't have that kind of impact. You been reading the Bible lately? Yes, God is God. God could have donkeys preaching this morning if he wanted to, but he'd, he wanted to have men. He called men to preach the word of God. Nowadays, people say, well, if I could just have some kind of a sign, 
A sinful and adulterous generation, Jesus said, requires a sign. The sign was given to the Jew. Now God says, I've given you the scripture. You don't need a sign. I've given you Genesis to Revelation. And more than that, if you'd read it, you'd understand I gave you Jesus. I gave you my only begotten son. What will you do with him? Let's bow for prayer this morning. Brother Richard, were you able to get that pulled up this morning? You got it, buddy? Just a moment. I'm going to let you listen to a song. The title of the song is Throw Out the Lifeline. Throw Out the Lifeline. Been a long time since I heard it. I want to ask you this morning, our heads are bowed, our eyes are closed, nobody's looking around this morning. How many say, preacher, in some form or fashion, God spoke to my heart this morning. You slip your hand up and say, God spoke to my heart, the importance of God bless you. God bless you. Amen. Amen. Pushing or pulling? You say, preacher, I'm just in neutral. No, 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 we can't be there. We're one way or the other. How many of you in this building this morning, you know somebody lost and undone without God or his son? Somebody, you're not judging them, you're not even judging their life, but preacher, they've told me they don't know Jesus. They have no interest in the things of God right now. How many remembers when you didn't have an interest in the things of God? I do. I remember when I was somewhere else on Saturday night besides studying the Bible. I remember when I was somewhere else on Sunday morning besides Sunday school and the church service. Let me say, preacher, I have a loved one or a friend that's lost. Help me pray for them. Would you slip your hand up this morning? Amen. Their hands all over this building, literally all over the building. God wants us to throw out the lifeline. God wants us to pull how are we going to pull? By multiplying, not dividing. How are we going to pull? By contending, not compromising on the truths of God's precious word. If you're here today and you're lost, you need to be saved. I wouldn't wait another day. Jesus is coming. Now is the accepted time. If the Lord's dealing with your heart, you want to receive Christ as your Savior, then I encourage you to come in this invitation. Brother Richard's going to play a song over the intercom.